Okay, now this slide we are looking at uh, what's on page 147 in your textbook, and these are the characteristics of the plants or the traits that Mendel studied and that we'll be talking about in this chapter. So the first thing we're going to do is something called a monohybrid cross. That is a cross or a mating between different parent plants that have a difference in only one characteristic. So we're going to be focusing in on purple flowers and white flowers. Other than that, they're identical to each other. And at first, remember the, the few slides ago, we showed you when they snipped the stamen and they did the parental generation. Well, this is actually going to be between the F1 generation. So we're going to be looking at what happened to the offspring of that purebred purple with the purebred white. So here is the slide that will show it. It doesn't show the Punnett square. I'll show you that later. But right here you can see the P generation which are true breeding plants. You have the purple and the white. And the X in the middle means that they were mated together. And that's a cross. That's how they indicate it with, an, uh, with that X sign. It indicates that those two were bred together. And they produced all purple plants. And that was the F1 generation. The purple and the white produced all purple. The white was gone. So Mendel saw that, and he was like, where to go? And he felt that there were units of information being passed down. He didn't know what they were, but obviously something came from the purple plant and not from the white. So what he did then is he let these plants self fertilize. So the F1 mated with F1 or themselves. Okay, so the F2 generation is that offspring. So the F1 was mated with the F1, so you can see the F1 times F1 cross, which produced the F2 generation, and that's as far as we're going to go. And the F2 generation had out of four plants, three were purple and one was white. So 75% or three quarters of all the plants were purple and one quarter had white. So what happened? Why would this happen? What are some of the things that we're looking at here? So we're going to start to look at a Punnett square of this in a little bit. We are going to look at more terms first before we look at the Punnett square so you could understand what is actually happening here. So basically he developed four hypotheses from this F1 cross, the monohybrid cross. Remember, it was a purple with a white. It was only different for in one gene. So what he figured out is that there have to be alternative genes. Not all the genes are the same. So the genes that code for traits are going to look different from each other. They don't have the same um, makeup, chemical makeup but they still code for the same trait. In other words, there are alternate versions of the same gene. There's a gene that codes for purple color and a gene that codes for white color. They are basically the same gene, but they have an alternate molecular form. For each character, an organism inherits two alleles or two genes one allele from one parent, one allele from the other parent. Now, if the organism 
is homozygous. In other words, purebred for the gene, then both of the alleles are identical. So in other words, the purebred plants that we first looked at, the P generation, they were homozygous because they had two genes, one from each parent, and both of them were identical genes. So they were purebreds. The two different alleles, the two different genes that they got were identical to each other. But then when we get down to the F1 generation and you have a hybrid and the genes are different from each other, and that's what we had with the hybrids, they're called heterozygous. So homozygous means that they have the same gene from each parent. They're identical. They're purebreds. Heterozygous, they're hybrids. Now, if two of the genes or alleles of an inherited pair differ, so now we're looking at the heterozygous state. So we're looking at the F1 generation. You get two genes, as did the, the purple plants in the F1 generation. They got the purple and they got the white. But what happened in the first generation is they were all purple. So we can assume that that gene or allele was dominant because the recessive is hidden. The, so the recessive allele does not demonstrate itself when there's a dominant allele present. But if two of the recessive allele are present, which is what the white plants were, then you're going to have the recessive trait show. The recessive trait will never sh demonstrate itself unless it gets two copies of it from both parents. And then the fourth hypothesis he had was that gametes, which are the sperm or egg, they only have one allele or one gene for each characteristic. The gametes, when they form, and this is what he's looking at, when the alleles separate themselves during meiosis, that you don't get two copies of the same gene from one parent. You only get one copy of the gene from a parent. Remember, every parent also had a mom and dad and had two genes for the same trait sent down to them. We have two copies of every gene. But when our sperm and egg form, only one of them can go into the sperm or the egg that we create, the gametes. And that is called the law of segregation. You can't get two genes into the same gamete. If you remember, we looked at some problems when something like that happened. Uh, and a, a big example, not sort of an example, but maybe help clarify this, is the trisomy 21. There was a whole extra chromosome that didn't get separated from the other chromosome. So there were three instead of just one from each parent. One parent produced an extra copy. And that's not supposed to happen. Well, it's the same thing with your genes. Each parent has two copies, but only one copy is going to get sent into the sperm or the egg. And that's called the law of se segregation. Now, to show all this, 
he did this with uh, a Punnett square, which shows all of the possible combinations that can occur. First, we'll look at this animation to see if it shows something that'll help you. So this is showing the parents. Okay, so each parent, their diploid, we have two copies of every gene. If you look here, this yellow and blue, the large one, one came from the mom, one came from the dad. So that's one chromosome. Then we have the small chromosome here. And here again, you have yellow and blue. The two blues came from the same parent. The two yellows came from the same parent. This is diploid. It's showing four chromosomes. And the haploid number is two. So if you go look at what happens when the gametes are formed, you can see that there are several combinations possible for each of the sperm or egg that are formed. They're haploid, and they get one of the large chromosome and one of the small chromosome. And also they swap material, as you can see here. Uh, don't worry about that, but that'll show you the different material, uh, the way they cross over material during meiosis, which you really don't need to understand the whole process of, but this is the result of meiosis occurring. Now we look at the other parent, because we're going to make babies with these. And here we've got two greens. Those came from one parent, and two reds. Those came from another parent. So this is a diploid parent. And these are the possible gametes that this parent could make. So what we're going to do is we're going to select a parent and watch what happens to the offspring. So let's take the two blues up here. And I am going to take this one, the red and the green. So when they mix, it's like there's a bag of parent one and a bag of parent two. You shake it all up with all the different gametes in it. And the two that get together produce a diploid offspring. So here you can see there's the long blue and the little blue, which came from the parent at the top and the red, large red, and the little green, which came from the parent below. So now we have a diploid offspring. This is what we're looking at when we look at the Punnett squares. We're looking at the possible combinations that this offspring could be. So let's pick another two pairs. Let's go with the yellow large yellow, little green, and the longer green with the shorter green. And look at the offspring. Totally different diploid offspring. It's going to have different traits. But look at the parent, the grandparent, so to say. That, I mean, that's where it all came from. And when the gametes form, it's by chance which two are going to result. But when we're looking at the formation of the gametes, we are looking at the large separating from the small, and none of these gametes got too large and too small. They got one large and one small, and that's, that's because each is a different chromosome. You don't get two copies of the same chromosome in the sperm or egg. We can look at one more. Here we have the yellow blue with the small blue and you could see that in the offspring and I didn't change the other parent. All I changed was the 
uh, one of the parents, parent one. And you can see that the offspring is a diploid there. Now we could go and pick this one. And it's by chance. You never know which sperm is going to fertilize which egg. Now you can assume this is the same as what happens to us, except we have 46 chromosome in our diploid state. And once our gametes form, the sperm and egg, we have 23 chromosomes. And they are all different from each other because they have to separate the chromosomes from each other. So you get a copy one, copy two, copy three, copy four of each chromosome. You have to have each chromosome from the karyotype in your gametes so that your child, in turn, gets two copies of every chromosome once you mate with another homo sapien. So here we're going to start to look at the Punnett square and put it all together. Here's the P generation again. The genetic makeup is made up of alleles, alternate versions of the same gene. So we have one that codes for white and one that codes for purple. The way we indicate this with the two uppercase letters there, we're looking at the genes that are being passed down. So this purple flower makes only purple genes. We're only looking at color. So we, and it's the dominant trait, we've already presented that. And, and so when we represent the, gen, the genetic code for purple, we use two uppercase P's. With the white flowers, that's the recessive trait. So we indicate white by two lowercase P's. And remember, only lowercase, two of them together of the recessive gene will demonstrate itself. And in the end, what happens is when you mate uppercase P, uppercase P with lowercase p, lowercase p, the only sperm or egg that the purple plant produces is uppercase P. The only sperm or egg that the white plant produces is a lowercase p. And in turn, you have an F1 generation that's heterozygous or hybrid and no longer purebred. It's got an uppercase p and a lowercase p. The white is hidden. It's a recessive gene. So this plant now is a hybrid. So now we're going to mate F1 with F1. Its genetic makeup is uppercase P, lowercase p. And when we uh, create the sperm and egg, they're going to create half of the genetic material that goes into a sperm will be uppercase P and the other half will be lowercase p. And they're showing the Punnett square right below here. Uppercase p, lowercase p. So here's the lowercase p, it came from that parent. So this is one parent. This parent produces uppercase p, lowercase p. They split in the law of segregation when the gametes are formed. So you have a gamete with uppercase P in it and a gamete with lowercase P in it. And it's going to be 50% because that's all we're looking at is the two traits. So when we get down to doing the Punnett square, we have uppercase P, lowercase P. That's from one parent. And then we have the same thing on the other side. One will be from the female side and one will be the male side, but they're both hybrids. 
and they had the same genetic makeup. And in the end, when we look at the F2 generation, we are going to, when we do the Punnett square, you pull the uppercase P down. So here's an uppercase P, here's an uppercase P. Lowercase p, you pull that down. Lowercase p, lowercase p. Now here you pull across. Here you pull across. And in turn, you end up with three quarters of the plants being purple and one quarter being white. So the terms that we're looking at here, you see phenotypic ratio and genotypic ratio. Phenotype is what you see. So it's sort of like a photo. So you can see there are three purple and one white offspring in the F2 generation. So the ratio is three purple to one white. Now the genotype is looking at the letters or the genes, and that's what the letters represent. And in this case, you have one uppercase P, uppercase P, which is a purebred purple plant that's just like its grandparent from the P generation. Then you have two heterozygotes, uppercase P, lowercase P just like the F1 generation. And all three of those are purple because the uppercase P is dominant. And then you have one lowercase p, lowercase p. And that's the white. And that is also purebred. It's homozygous. So the genotype ratio is one homozygous dominant purple, two heterozygous purple, and one homozygous white. So here, this talks about, again, the terminology that I just used. The organism's physical traits, or what you see, are phenotypes. And in an organism's genetic makeup, which is the letters that we've been looking at, is the genotype. And we've already discussed homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes are when you have two parents, both number one chromosomes from each parent are homologous chromosomes. Chromosome 2 from each parent, homologous. Chromosome 3 from each parent. If you go back to look at the karyotype, the picture of the karyotype, each of the chromosomes of the karyotype that are numbered 1 are homologous chromosomes. And homologous chromosomes have the same type of genes at specific locations on the gene. I have a picture of this coming up, so I'll show the terminology in a minute. But the genes are at a specific location on the homologous chromosomes. And alleles of the same gene, which are Alleles are just alternate molecular forms of the same gene are at the same location. So here we are. We have a set or a pair of homologous chromosomes. Could be chromosome one. And one, uh, so you have two copies of every chromosome in every cell of your, in the nucleus. And you have one copy that you got from your mother and one copy of the same chromosome from your dad. So you have two copies of every chromosome. Those are the homologous chromosomes. Now when we're looking at a chromosome, it's almost like they have a map on it. And the location 
on the chromosome is a specific location and the genes that we're talking about and here we're going to be looking at a couple of different genes because your chromosomes have thousands of genes on them and we're only we've only been talking about purple and white that's one gene amongst thousands but if you look at the letter P okay the gene location for the purple color is right underneath the the pinched in area and notice that the location for the P is the same on both chromosomes. And in this case, the genotype of this parent is uppercase P, uppercase P. So they're homozygous for the dominant allele. Now when we go to this, the letter A, it's for a totally different trait. Could be for height. It could be for pea pod shape, uh, or if we're looking at humans, it, it's just a different gene. And here we have two lowercase a's. They're on the same chromosome because they're homologous chromosomes. They're at the same location on each gene. And in this case, the two lowercase a's are the same gene because they code exactly the same. So their mole molecular form is the same. So their alleles are the same. And in this case, they're homozygous or purebred for the recessive trait. And they would express the recessive trait. Now when we get to the letter B, uppercase always indicates the dominant allele. So the dominant allele is the uppercase B. And you can see the location or the loci of the dominant allele B. And then you see the exact same location for the lowercase b. Now they have different molecular forms of the same gene. One is coding for the dominant trait. One is coding for the recessive trait. And in this case, the individual is going to express the dominant trait and they're considered heterozygous for the trait.